Mabel Shaw, 35, and Hope Shaw, 12, were charged before Mr. Harold McKenna at Lambeth Police Court, being concerned together in stealing two pairs of stockings and other articles valued at eight shillings and four pence. They pleaded guilty. Unbelievable. Mm. Wow. Sharon is meeting social historian Dr. Kate Bradley to find out about her family's life in Brixton. Sharon, I have got some documents to show you. I'd like to start with a photograph. Wow. My grandmother, my mother, and my uncle. It's actually one of the nicest pictures I've seen of my grandmother, where she looks quite soft, and mm. I love the way that my mother is holding on to her, her mother. Mm. It's a very warm photograph. It is. My mum looks very sweet in there, yeah. too. Wow. So this is an extract from one of the South London newspapers. Mm-hmm. What year was this? This is 1929. A Brixton incident. Mother and daughter charged. Child takes the blame. Oh, my Lord. Mabel Shaw, 35, a variety artist of Acre Lane, Brixton. But who is this? This is your grandmother. Mabel? Oh, yes. She seems to be calling herself Mabel here. Whether it was a name she came up with when she'd been arrested, or whether she was using a slightly different name at that time. Probably because she was arrested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doris Dolly. Mabel. However, um, your mother's name, Hope, yes. is correct. Mabel Shaw, 35, and Hope Shaw, 12, were charged before Mr Harold McKenna at Lambeth Police Court, being concerned together in stealing two pairs of stockings and other articles valued at eight shillings and four pence. They pleaded guilty. Unbelievable. Mm. Wow. Must have been pretty desperate to do that. When they were stopped, the girl exclaimed, I will take all the blame if you will let mummy go. Mm. Oh, my God. That is just heartbreaking. Yeah. A detective officer said, Mrs Shaw was separated from her husband and had an aged mother to support. She was a variety artist, but had been out of employment on and off for five or six months. Talking here about being out of work. And separated. Yeah. Yeah. So to have two kids, a husband gone, it must have been really hard. At the time that Sharon's grandmother and mother were caught stealing in 1929, they were no longer living with James Shaw, Sharon's grandfather. Oh, it's like I feel a pain in my heart, you know, looking at my mum's little face in this photo. She's just such a sweet, innocent little thing, holding on to her mum really tight, and she must have had one hell of a childhood with no father, her mother was working, so growing up and not having the comfort of your parents. My heart really does break for her, and it gives me a sense of why she was the way she was. After they were arrested, Dolly and Hope were taken to the police court in Lambeth. Today, the court has become a Buddhist and meditation centre, but much of the original building has been preserved. Oh, my Lord, they've still got the original doors, too. Yeah. Wow. Well, there are a couple of things I'd like to show you if we go inside this cell here. OK. 
The first thing I'd like to show you is the Jailers Index. Mm -hmm. This is for December 1929. This kind of is the list of the people who'd come mm -hmm. through the cells on their way to kind of going to court. And down here, we find Mabel, or Dolly, mm -hmm. and Hope. Mabel's 35, Hope is 13, and they were arrested on the 12th of December, and it was for stealing stockings, etc. I wonder if they were stealing for Christmas gifts. I don't know. Quite possibly. Yeah. Would they have been brought in here? Yes. Yeah. Were they kept overnight, do you know? Um, I don't know for sure. I think it's quite likely because we do know that they saw the magistrate on a Monday and we know they were arrested on a Saturday. And the fact that they're on this suggests that they were here from Saturday night through to Monday morning. You'd just be traumatised, wouldn't you? Mm. Stuck in here as a little kid. Yeah. And what is this? This is the 1939 register. This is going forward about 10 years, mm -hmm. which is similar to a census of everybody in the country shortly after the outbreak of the Second World War. And it was used to gather information on the population for things like generating ID cards and ration books. And we can find Doris here. Mm -hmm. She's here. Oh, she was back to Doris now. Back to Doris. Mm -hmm. And here she is. And if we read along, she's a petrol can filler. That was her job yes. during the war? Yeah. OK. And a designated heavy worker. What does heavy worker mean? It meant that she was doing heavy industrial work. OK. And she would have got more rations as well. Really? Mm -hmm. For doing the manual, manual, manual work. work. Yeah. So we find out ten years later, my grandmother is working in the war effort, filling petrol cans, mm. and it says W. Yeah. So... She's given her marital status here as a W, which would mean widow. Widow, yes. yes. It is possible that she was indeed widowed. It's also possible that she was trying to keep up appearances. Easier to say that you're a widow than to say you're separated or divorced, right. particularly, at, particularly yeah. at this time. Yeah. This is where your grandfather falls off the record. Mm -hmm. um, we've not been able to find a death certificate um, or find him on the 1939 register. So it's quite possible he was using a different name. The thing is about my grandfather, don't know where he went or where he was from initially. Mm. I don't know he, anything about his background at all. And I put it in the add James, add family members here. Sharon is keen to know more about her grandfather's past, so she's searching the census online. This is a census um, from 1891, and I'm trying to trace Arthur James Shaw, who was my grandfather, I'm trying to trace his family to see where he actually came from. Because this man is like a ghost. OK, it says Arthur Shaw here, head, head of family. Annie, his wife. So my great-grandmother and father. And then there's three sons, Thomas, John and Arthur James, my Grandfather, OK, so he was son of Arthur. And where is he from? Hold on. Is that? Lancashire. And his mum, Annie, came from... This is really, really hard to make out. To me, it looks like America, Fallen River. Wow. America. That's unbelievable. My great-grandmother, his mum, was American. My God. <laughs> 